Oh. So, yeah. so now I start recording. Yeah. All right. All right, so the <clears throat> local area networks or land. This one actually, it's uh, the remaining of this chapter actually is very straightforward. I'm sure that you are you are aware about most of the, the concepts here. Um, types of uh, of network based on a scale. All right, based on 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 range. You can see this from, for example, LAN and and MAN and one. <clears throat> All right, so this one actually starting from here, for example, PAN, which is personal area network, like a Bluetooth. All right, a Bluetooth in, in our phone, we can create um, a network. We we'll call it this one personal, personal area uh, uh, network because actually it's a like a small group of, 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 of persons that can communicate with a really short, uh, you can see the, the distance is less than 10 meter. All right, so maybe inside the classroom we can create that um, uh, that network, and uh, uh, this one also we call it ad hoc. If you remember, it's an ad hoc network. Ad hoc. All right, this one ad hoc network. So that means there is no no need for the infrastructure in order to communicate. I have my own Bluetooth, and you have your own Bluetooth, and we can. I can send you message and I can receive message from from you. So we move about. So this is the range, for example. This is just an illustration. So this is the coverage. All right, this is the coverage for Bluetooth. So I can move up to local area network, for example. You can see here the standard is IEEE. Sorry, this one. Should be IE, E, E, triple E. Not two E, I triple E. <clears throat> All right. Um, 802.16 and 802.11. In 11, we have different, uh, like a, a Wi-Fi, we have different uh, letters here. For example, we have B, we have G, so depend on the, the standard and, and version. Local area network, you can see this is the, the coverage. This is the uh, coverage, all right? So we move, we move above, we have the uh, MAN, and for example, the IEEE 802.16D, or what we call it, the WiMAX. WiMAX, all right, so the coverage you can see is greater than, um, less than, I mean, 50 kilometer. So it's, I mean, really good, uh, good coverage. And we have also the, <coughs> the one which is the wide um, uh, 802.16e all right which is mobile wimax mobile uh, wimax so it's really provide a good coverage for mobile uh, devices all right for mobile devices so this is i mean how the range and technology so each i mean has its own has its own applications and has its own um, I mean, purpose to for for using it. Um, so it's, so it's, it's depend on the the applications and depend on the where you want to apply your 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 concept. Yeah. So here actually we have some, for example. Um, what we call it, some some devices, some sensors, or some IoT device that <clears throat> that use um, equipped with a Wi-Fi. All right, so we have, I mean, two in one is a sensor that can sense do some a specific uh, task, and also is uh, connected with the with a Wi-Fi. So sensor and forward, I can do the sensing. And also, I can collect the information and forward it to um, to another device or another another, another node or or to the I mean, server or 
All right, so this one actually it's uh, but for this one actually is um, uh, it's not possible. So in terms of. In terms of um, the IOT research. All right, IOT, if you are doing some. IOT project, then you can, I mean, uh, within this. Um, IEEE, for example, AO2.11, but you can use some some devices that help you, for example, the Node MCU and uh, the other one, we call it LoRa, if I'm not mistaken, comes with the ability to, uh, to send, to send that, and not only to, I mean, do some sensing on a specific task, but also provide you with the connections or moving your data to next stage. OK. All right, so the features of this one, as, as you know, uh, links device in a, a single office building or, or campus and limited to few and shared resources between personal computers and workstations. And it is a privately owned. This one for private. All right, so yeah, I mean, this one actually because already known when I said personal area network, it's a, I mean, for really a, a personal and for a specific task. For example, would like to share something and after that we we have done it and that's it. So it's an example of, of ad hoc, example of ad hoc network in specific purpose. So for the wide area uh, network, uh, long distance transmission over large distance geographical area, country or whatever, and connects uh, to router that connects to another LAN or, or one. For example, this one, the protocol asynchronous transfer mode. <coughs> and for, for MAN, size between LAN and one, and normally covers area inside a town or a city to provide high speed connectivity. This one, for example. All right, as I mentioned, WiMAX. And. And for the last one, for sure, you can see it's like. A, like, a, for example, really like here some some region or some. Um, I mean, connects two cities or normally, I mean, fix this one as a um, tower that provide the connectivity to mobile normally in along the highway in between two cities <clears throat> that can provide you with high speed uh, internet connections for for uh, mobile users. And also we have Another one I will explain after all. This one we call it run. All right, run. Which is what you mean by run, which is regional area network. Regional area network. This one actually first introduced in 2000 and and 16, if I'm not mistaken, implemented first time in the US in 2016, and after that in, in Singapore, also in uh, end of 2016, November 2016, if I'm not mistaken, in one of the uh, resort to provide uh, really high speed internet uh, connection and with really wide, uh, wide coverage area. Types of <coughs> telecommunication, traditional uh, local area and traditional wire area and high speed and high speed wide area or, or one wide area network or uh, metropolitan area networks or high speed local area networks. <coughs> and some features of, of this one, the wide area networks cover large geographical areas and circuits provided by common carriers, uh, interconnected 
switching north and high speed use optical fiber. All right, so optical fiber and transmission technique known as a synchronous transfer mode. <clears throat> All right, so other features of, of LAN and the differences between LAN and um, I mean, it's obvious. It's very clear the difference between these types of 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 uh, connections. If I connect through LAN or I connect through through one, and obviously at the applications and and the purpose of of using either LAN or 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 uh, once. All right. So this is the. I mean the the technologies, then a new technology, we call it RAN, all right, which is, if I'm not mistaken, you can search on it, 8.2, sorry, 8.02.22, uh, IEEE for sure, Institute of Electrical, Electronic Engineering, which is US, provide the standards. So you can see all this, actually is IEEE, you can see IEEE, which is the largest institute for electronics and um, communications and also computers, provide some standards which we are currently, I mean, using it. So IEEE 802 dots, the number here is different. For example, 15, I can refer to personal area network. Dot 11, I can refer to LAN. And here we have different versions, A, B, G, all right? This one, for example, we currently use G. And uh, um, this one, uh, IEEE 802, you can see this one actually is uh, is a fixed 802.16D. 16D refer to WiMAX. And this one, 16E, refer to mobile WiMAX, all right? So in terms of regional area network, so IEEE 802.22. I'm, I'm not really sure about this one, but I think it's a 22. All right, 22. So this one actually is RAN, which is Regional Area Network. Regional Area Network. This one actually is very nice and very interesting uh, uh, area actually to do some, some research on it. Uh, <clears throat> this one actually we cannot uh, adopt it uh, independently. This one actually it's related to some technology we call it cognitive radio. Cognitive radio all right cognitive radio so this one actually the cognitive radio going to change the philosophy of the communication system so we have traditional communication system uh, so this one the traditional uh, let's say and i'm not saying end but let's say starting point 2000 2000, all right, and starting from 2000 when when the smart guy from the Sweden, uh, John Mitola, proposed his idea and his PhD in, in 2000, uh, he claimed that he going to change the philosophy of, of communication system. But actually nobody uh, agree as, as usual. I mean, if you come out with, with, with an idea and you claim that your idea is going to change everything, so nobody will, will believe you until, I mean, some, some times after that, they will start to work on, on your idea, which is normal. So this one actually until, uh, let's say, 2008 or 2007. In 2007, research start on this idea, proposed idea, cognitive radio. The researchers, the scientists try to really think about the proposal, about the uh, structure that he proposed in his PhD thesis. And after that, they do agree uh, on what he proposed and what on what he delivered in his PhD uh, thesis and starts working to, to provide cognitive radio. So initial cognitive radio, for example, this one is a part of, of the project. This is one part of the project and another part in order to fully implement cognitive radio, they, they put the proposal until 20, sorry, 35. 
in order to fully, I mean, move from the traditional to the new philosophy provided by Metola in his uh, PhD thesis, uh, for example, in 2035. All right. So still, I mean, many countries is not yet implemented um, the, the cognitive radio US they, they have done. And as I mentioned, Singapore in end of 2016, they provided the first, um, what we call it, this one, uh, original air network in, in Sintosa. Sintosa is a resort. It's very, very nice resort, entertainment resort. And they provide that, um, that, that technology. So another part of, of this project of cognitive radio, we call it TV white space. TV white space. So we have three, I mean, uh, technologies that we can pay attention on it. Uh, regional area network, TV white space, and after that we can go and fully implement cognitive radio. So this one actually regional area network need a, a new infrastructure, a new infrastructure base station. And uh, this one uh, also needs some some new uh, base station. So in terms of cost, will I mean will 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 provide some some cost, but for long term, this one will be much uh, efficient compared to the traditional uh, communication technique. So this one actually is very, very interesting. I mean, very interesting area. And the story of this one, if you go and read about this one, cognitive, cognitive radio, and uh, about the John Metola when he proposed this one, uh, it's it's really um, interesting. <clears throat> and also, he's in 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 masters. Also, he provides something interesting, which is software defined radio, SDR. So this one actually is very smart guy and always propose something uh, intelligent. So this one software defined radio also at, it's an interesting technique that that the mobile, that all the wireless and communication technique, no need to change hardware. All right, no need to change hardware. You can upgrade, you can do everything by by software. All right, so software defined radio. I mean, in order to implement software defined radio, for sure we need some new front end. All right, new front end front front end at our mobile all right we need front end at our mobile what do you mean by front end that means the receiver all the the amplifier the range of amplifier and all the processing digital signal processing we need i mean some new hardware and after that we can implement what you call the software defined radio this one i mean using in in the us especially in the military all right in in the military uh, <coughs> their their radio and their a communication based on uh, SDR software defined radio in order to provide some high level of, of security and with easy configuration. Anyway, so this is, I mean, um, uh, the idea of um, uh, RAN, Regional Area Network, which is IEEE 802.22. And the idea comes from this one, Cognitive Radio. And uh, uh, also, so this one actually is related to this one. And this one is related to this one. But the main idea, this one proposed by uh, Mitola. And after that, researchers, scientists, they, I mean, they have adopted this idea in order to develop um, uh, TV white space and in order to develop regional area networks. <clears throat> so in order to, I mean, fully uh, implement the regional area networks, um, In order to fully implement the uh, regional area networks, we have, I mean, some some concept that we need to we need to to understand. Uh, for example, here you can see I'm putting the license band, and we have a license band. All right. So what's the, the main difference between license band and a license band? So this one actually is a license band that you are as a subscriber, or we are as a subscriber. We need to purchase the same card. And we need to insert it in our mobile, and after that we need to to buy, for example, uh, to I mean reload. Okay, we I mean we can buy some credits, five thousand, ten thousand. I'm not sure about the the range. 
or 36 or 40. If you'd like to have unlimited internet, all right. So anyway, so that means we are we are purchasing, all right. We are subscriber. But for this one, Allison band, it's a free band. It's for ISM, industrial, scientific, and medical. All right, ISM we call it industrial, scientific, and and medical. So this one, for example, in the US and uh, uh, in the UK, or I mean. The countries they have their own band ISM, which I mean uh, for specific for specific application. For example, the the ambulance uh, using this one. I mean they can communicate with uh, uh, from one to another one, and they can communicate with them um, with the hospital. All right, without any interruption, without any traffic. All right, and for sure they will have their own uh, their own channel free because they have their own band all right so they put that 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 band and this one we call it the unlicensed band so you, we can we can access it all right we can access it um, uh, for free all right so if we are here in licensed band if we are here in licensed band we are as a user we call it the primary user we are primary user so this is our band all right this is our band so that's why we are the primary user and the base station, which is the normal base station that you can see everywhere. This one we call it the primary uh, primary base station. All right, primary base station. So this one actually provided license band, so we cannot access to this until we purchase some credits in our mobile. All right, so we have different license band, license band one, license band two. For example, here is correct. This band is correct. This band is for uh, what we call that cell that company as or or uh, or any for example no rules if they have mobile communication or fast link if they have mobile communication so we have i mean so different license band two it's different from license band one so depend on on the companies how, how many companies we have and how many cells we have all right so on the other hand <clears throat> what's the main actually problem in 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 this technique so in this technique you know that the spectrum actually is natural resources the spectrum actually is natural resources and it's limited all right so that means if we would like to open a new technologies we are keep opening new technologies you can see we move from personal to this one and to this one and to this one and to to regional area network so that means we are keep utilizing the bandwidth the spectrum again and again and again so uh, so this one, the smart, the smart, um, the smart guy, Mitola, proposed that. Okay, so I mean, let's let's do sensing to this one. Let's try to sense this band, and we can see if it is fully utilized or not. So if it is fully utilized, okay. So my my proposal, my idea, my proposed idea will be. I mean, just you can ignore it. But if we find that this lysine band is, I mean. Most of the time is free, then why we are keep opening a new band for a new technology? So let's let's have an efficient utilization for our band before we think to open a new band. All right, so this is his, his I mean, this is the what what he proposed. So after that, in in this one in 2000, and after that in 2004, all right, here 2004, the US actually said they tried to think in terms of, of his idea. So they took his idea and they did a sensing in Washington DC, which is the most crowded city in the world where both commercial and government offices are there. And they did a sense to the band at peak hour, which is 12, between 12, between 12 and two. This is the busy hour, which is lunch time there. And most of the employees they're using their phones texting communicate with their friends okay so the result actually is was really surprised by the results they find that 68 percent of the band are free not utilized and before that we are claiming that this one is fully utilized we are sorry we cannot it's very difficult to open a new band so you can see that this one it's 68 percent of the band, it was free. 
All right, so after that, they said that this idea actually is clear and we agree on it and we're going to adopt it. All right, so they're going to adopt it. How they're going to adopt it? By using, I mean, by using, by utilizing, provide efficient utilizing, efficient utilization to this band by proposing what we call a secondary user, secondary user and secondary base station. So now we have primary, all right? For example, here in Kurdistan, in, in Middle East, we have only primary. We don't have that, that technology, all right? Um, in, in Singapore, they have, for example, the primary base station and they fully implemented about the secondary base station in order to improve the spectrum utilization. So they provide better, better spectrum utilization and better effic efficiency for their internet, for their mobile connections. Everything will be, I mean, in a proper way, not like, for example, um, here in, in, in this area in Middle East, for example, after 20 years or 10 years, we will, we will suffer. All right, maybe after 10 years, we will think about this one and we will try to, to implement it. Anyway, all right, <clears throat> so they propose another idea that we will divide the network into two users and two primary and two, two base stations, one for primary for those who are subscribed and one who would like to temporarily access the band. All right, temporarily access the band. No need to open IEEE 802.something or IEEE 82.11.g and C and whatever letter. So we need to... I mean, better utilize this band. So the idea come in in order to provide better spectrum utilization. Actually, the details of this one we have, I mean, I mean, many, many details, but I'm just explaining the general idea to be aware about, I mean, some telecommunication system where we are approaching or where we are going. <clears throat> yeah, for example, here we can see uh, the secondary user can utilize both a licensed and licensed band, all right? For example, this one licensed band, we are primary user, we cannot access this one ISM. We cannot access this one. We can access only the band that we are subscribed to. But in cognitive radio, all right, you can see this one here, XG user, XG, what do you mean by XG user? That means next generation, all right, next generation. We don't put 4G, 5G, 6G, or 10G. They put only XG. That means this one, because as I mentioned, will fully implement it in two, uh, 2035. So they put XG, that means next generation. So next year, still this one, next generation. After 10 years, still this one, next generation. All right, so it's better than 5G, 6G, and whatever. And even for the base station, we have XG, next generation base station. So this one, you can see the advantages. This one can connect to a licensed band and also can connect to uh, uh, license band. All right. So in this case, we can improve the spectrum utilization, but how we can improve the spectrum utilization through what we call it the spectrum sensing. All right. Spectrum sensing. For example, this is the this is the time and this is the, the frequency. Uh, for example, this is the frequency in use. And we have some holes. We said that is not fully utilized. For example, in Washington, D.C., if you remember, 68 percent is free. All right. During the peak hour. So this one actually is a free, this one is a free, this one is a free. So the idea of cognitive radio is the device, the smart device that comes with ability of sensing the spectrum. So before you may call, your device going to sense the spectrum. So sense the spectrum, if any free band I can utilize. All right, so this is my, I utilize here for free. All right, so what will happen if, <clears throat> what will happen if in between some primary user would like to access because the primary user has the highest priority in accessing the spectrum. All right, so no problem. This one is a smart device. So I can sense the spectrum again. So once I find another hole, then I can move. All right, I can move here. So I'm utilizing this one and, and enjoy my, my, my communication with my friends. So if another primary user would like to utilize this one, I can move again and I can move again. So this one to call it the spectrum mobility. All right, spectrum mobility, spectrum sensing and spectrum and power allocations. All these ones comes to help this one, cognitive radio. All right, cognitive radio uh, networks. So again, what I need to, to deliver that this one actually is really interesting, but actually we need a time in order to implement it in, in, in our area, uh, in, in Middle East, in order to enjoy, I mean, the. Uh, um, I mean, nice communications or nice wireless communication and nice telecommunication system.
towards that throne. All right, so this is, I mean, the, the, the illustration here. All right, this is the, the illustration that I would like to uh, to deliver. All right, so this one is the latest one. Regional area networks, but uh, unfortunately we are not at that level actually to start uh, adopting and implementing such um, such technology. We are in in 5G now. Uh, sorry, in in 4G. They implemented some some companies. Um, I can't remember which one. I think uh, uh, which which one? Fastlink or uh, Martin Fastlink? They they adopted 4G. What sir? Uh, Fastlink. They have adopted 4G technology. Yeah, I of think course, sir. Time ago. Yes, sir. Since I think 2013 or 14, sure. since it was since since it came out, uh, they have been adopting 4G. All right. I That's think right. the first it's the first company in, in Kurdistan yeah. to adopt 4G. Yes. And what about the uh, the mobile fasting for internet provider? Sorry, what what what, what do we mean? I mean for mobile it's communication. It's 3G, not not updated more. Yeah. But uh, but they're doing it. Hopefully for 20, 21 to twenty two, they're gonna do the five G. I think for mobile too. For mo all right, that's that's great. Yeah. Uh, I, they, they they said they are working on the five G. They, they they bought the equipment and stuff. The equipment uh, what? The equipments for five G. Oh, I see. Yeah. Because five G actually it's uh, need a lot of. I mean, a little of effort and, and work as well, because I mean, we, we're going to change all the base stations and getting smaller and the cells also getting smaller and smaller. So a lot of a lot of effort and also the budget should be high in order to. Uh, I mean, to implement full uh, uh, full 5G. So this is one of one of the challenge that. <clears throat> all right. OK, so this is, I mean, uh, the idea of uh, regional area networks. OK, and uh, one one more thing is that. Uh, uh, yeah, so you can see this is the the cognitive radio, how how they going to change the, the philosophy of communication because there will be no fixed spectrum. <clears throat> All the spectrum will be dynamic. All right, all the spectrum will be dynamic and I am as a user as a device. All right, by using the cognitive radio or that smart device comes with ability to sense the spectrum, so I will be free to use any band. But there's, for example, conditions that I need to sense. I need to sense that band. If it is available, I can utilize. If it is not available, I will search for some hole. All right, and for sure will be some available band because this one you can see in Washington DC. It's really amazing, 68 free at the peak hour. All right, so from that time they start working very hard to change their their communication system. So we have another technique uh, here. We call it TV white space. Also, this device, since this device comes with the ability to sense, all right, ability to sense, they will they will they will make um, a bank of. Or a pool of spectrum, a pool of spectrum. So this one is a TV. The spectrum for for the TV is not I mean utilized. I mean very few. For example, now if you if you'd like to if you'd like to check how many TV actually is is on. I mean just a few number of of TVs. So normally the research they they done the TV will start from let's say 6 p.m. when people go back to home from work until 12. So this is the the peak. After that, most of the band will be free, available. All right. So in this case, also they provide another idea to make a pool of free spectrum, a pool of free spectrum that devices can utilize. All right. Rather than keep opening band, new band for new technology again and again and again. 
All right. So this is the this is the idea, and it's uh, as I mentioned, it's very interesting. It's very uh, very nice proposal, and and also very nice work uh, done by uh, uh, by those who really uh, uh, implement. Um, uh, I mean the cognitive radio and the regional uh, area uh, networks. <clears throat> yeah, so in terms of uh, local area networks, the, the architectures, we have different topologies. We have some layouts, medium access control, transmission medium. For example, we have uh, a tree, we have mesh, we have a bus and we have ring and we have star. So each topology has its own uh, advantages and disadvantages. All right. Uh, uh, <clears throat> for example, this is the uh, the bus uh, topology. How it looks like, and uh, this is the the ring, and this is the star. This is the tree, and we have a mesh mesh network that each node actually connected directly to another node in the in the network. And uh, one minute, guys, I need just to charge my PC. Uh, do we have much material left for today? If, if, if so, we could maybe have a break. Oh, actually, it's not, not that much. Yeah, OK, guys, so. That, not that much. This is I mean, only the, the topologies and. I will just uh, explain a little bit about the tutorial. Right, so this is actually how it looks like the uh, the, uh, the bus topology. Um, all right, so. All right, so here, for example, we have full duplex connections between the station and and top allow for transmission and reception. This one, all right, for example, this is how the, the structures for the illustrations for a bus. All right, so it's um, it's a um, multi-point. All right, so we have different different point features and one long cable. You can see this one actually. It's one uh, long cable, and all nodes are connected to to bus by what we call the uh, drop line. All right, drop line type. So here we have. This one tap, or we call it drop line. Here we have a tap, we have a drop line. Here we have a tap, and we have a drop line. All right, so yeah. So, in terms of um, um, in terms of disadvantages, actually, of this one, for example, if this one we have a really long. All right, line. Then when we would like to send a message from this terminal to another terminal, that the signal will be weaker and weaker since the, I mean, trouble for long for long distance with some um, losses. All right, that might take place in in between. And um, the advantages actually of of this one is uh, easy to to install. All right, it's not it's not uh, difficult. 
And the disadvantages actually include the difficult reconnection and fault isolation. So any fault in between, for example, will affect uh, uh, the other nodes. All right, for example, if this one got a, a problem in this tab, then it's difficult to reach to another, another node. So for the ring topology, All right, so in terms of, of ring, um, this one, all right, for example, a ring uh, topology, we have, I mean, some some ring, and in between we have some, uh, some, some nodes. So each device has a, a dedicated point, all right, connections with uh, only two devices. So for example, this one goes to this one, this one goes to this one, and this one, and this one, all right? In terms of um, uh, advantage, it's easy to install this one. It's not uh, not difficult, easy to install and, and configure. And um, um, in terms of, of this uh, uh, advantages, it's what you call it the um, uh, unidirectional traffic, all right, unidirectional traffic in terms of, I mean, for example, this one and, and this one will, will affect, all right, it's not, we have one direction of traffic, but we have some unidirectional of, of traffic. And the star topology, all right, star topology, star topology, where's the star, this one? Um, this is the star topology. You can see we have one hub, which is the central. All right, this one central. And we have a node connected to this hub. All right, so this one cannot reach to this point until we communicate with the hub. So hub and after that forward to this one. So for example, actually for the advantage actually is easy to manage. All right, because we have one central unit and after that we distribute. But the disadvantages in, in terms of fault so what will happen if, if this one actually got a problem? So that means there is no connection, 0% of, of connection, all right? No way to, to communicate. So I'm, I'm, I'm sure that you are familiar about this one. So in terms of choose of, of topology, we have uh, reliability, performance, need considering in, I mean, in terms of wiring, in terms of, in terms of area where we're gonna implement our, our uh, network. Right, so um, the mesh, yeah, sorry, for, for the mesh network, all right, mesh network, that means, for example, we have, um, I mean, all devices connected to each other. For example, we have one device here, one device here, and one device here. So this one going to connect to this one and connect to this one. And also this one going to connect to this one. All right, and going to connect to this one. And this one going to connect to this one, and going to connect to this one. All right. So in terms of in terms of uh, in terms of physical links, so we need we need um, because for example this one node one, node not two, and this one node three. So node one actually is connected to uh, n minus one. Not am I right? So the entire physical length, so we need n n minus one. So I mean, it's very simple to to calculate this one. But if we assume the the interesting point in mesh topology, if we assume that we have, I mean, uh, two way of of communications. All right. If we assume that if we have um, a two way of of communication, this one the physical length can be divided by two. All right. So it's uh, for example full duplex. This one will be n, n minus one, all together divided by two. All right. So depend on 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 how we're gonna uh, design the um, our mesh network. All right. So I think. Um, this is all about uh, chapter three, but what I need to do now, I need to um, explain uh, one questions from from tutorial. 
uh, one question from tutorial. Where is the tutorial? Okay. Um, Ala, you said you ha you need one question related to um, time division, something like that. Is, th is that correct? Your request. Allah, is that your request? Am I right? Uh, yes, sir. About ah, for, for the time division, yeah. All right. Okay, guys. So for this question, all right. For this question, question number four, if you remember, we have discussed it. And uh, but I received some some comment from uh, two students, if I'm not mistaken, or three students. Uh, the information in in four analog signal is to be multiplexed and transmitted over a telephone channel that has this is the the bandwidth for for the the channel all right um, and each of the analog baseband signal is band limited to um, 500 hertz um, we need to design communication system block diagram that will allow the transmission of these four sources over the telephone channel using FDM and we need to show the block diagram of complete system, including the transmission channel and reception portion, including the bandwidth of the signal and of the various points. All right. So this is, um, I mean, um, we can say it's a um, real scenario. So normally in, in real scenarios, we can, we can, um, uh, I mean, we can use same, I mean, uh, um, technique that we we, we provided here in, in, in this question. Um, all right. <clears throat> Let me open this one, the PowerPoint. So this is the question, guys. <clears throat> this is the question, all right? So the most important point, guys, here is we have signal, all right? We have four signals, all right? Whatever we have here, four signals. And this is the bandwidth of each signal, all right? This is the bandwidth of each signal. And we have another bandwidth, this one, which is for the channel. All right, which is for the channel. So this is, I mean, the questions that I received, I mean, three students or two students, I can't remember. Anyway, they asked me about this one, this one and this one. We have two, two bandwidth. So this one actually for, for the signal that I want to send. All right, we have four signals. Each, the bandwidth is 500 hertz. And this one is a telephone channel that I need to send my signal using this channel. All right, so this is the bandwidth of my channel. All right. OK. So guys, normally in. In communication, so this is my signal. All right, and this is my channel. This is my channel. And this is the receiver. OK, so this is the bandwidth. This is the band. Band, actually, what we mean by band is a set of frequencies. Am I right? So I start from, for example, F1 until F10. Anyway, I mean any, any value. In our case, we will start from 0 to 500 hertz. So this is the band, 0 to 500 hertz. And this one, we start from 400. 
All right, to what? 3,010. 3,010. So this is my band. 3,010. Which is range of frequency 400, 410, 20, but depend, all right, until I reach 3,100. So, very important note you have to keep in your mind, guys. The best scenario in communication, the best scenario in communication, the band of signal is smaller than the band of channel. Okay, why? Because this one you can see four channels. If I would like to calculate the band of four channels, so I need to multiply four times. The band of each is 500. All right, so what's the result is 2000, 2000 Hertz. 2000. Zero, zero, zero. So this is the bandwidth, the total bandwidth of four channel, one, two, three, and four. Okay, what about the bandwidth of this one? So if I would like to determine the band of this one, I need to subtract this one high minus low. So 3010 minus 400, all right, will be zero, zero seven and two so two thousand seven hundred so which one is bigger for sure this one two thousand seven hundred is bigger than the data all right the bandwidth of signals so that means this one will be perfect scenario this one will be perfect scenario my signal can fully accommodate it all right with a free space inside channel so at receiver i don't have much difficulty in order to recover my signal will be very simple technique, all right? Very simple technique in order to recover my signal. But this is not the, I mean, most of scenarios. In some scenarios, we have the signal, the band, all right? Which is greater than the bandwidth of the set channel. So what I need to do in this particular case, though this one actually will be really difficult, all right? At the receiver, if I would like to recover, if I would like to recover my signal, it will be very difficult. Why? Because this one is not fit. You can see this one, my my channel that will carry this signal. And you can see this one actually is gonna lose. All right, and this one also gonna lose. So that means at receiver, if I send, for example, this is my own signal, at receiver, I have some missing, all right? Some missing here, missing here. Okay, so this is actually is, is very difficult scenario. All right, it's very difficult scenario. But the question can happen, yes. We have some scenarios where the bandwidth of signals is greater than the bandwidth of, of channel. All right. So in our example, the example that's provided to you, the bandwidth of signal is smaller than the bandwidth of channel. So we don't have any problem. All right. We don't have any problem. We don't we don't need to use any technique in order to recover of the receiver. Here we have 2000 and here we have 2700. All right. So this is the first point. So this is the first point. This one, I calculate the bandwidth of channel, the channel that will hold, that will take my signal and send it to receiver side, all right? And send it to receiver side. So this is the bandwidth I calculated, which is 2,700 greater than my four channel. This one from zero to 500, from 500 to 1,000, from 1,000 to 1,500, and from 1,500 to 2,000, all right? Which is 2K. All right, so now I have four channel. What I need to do, I need to combine. I need to combine them, for example. This one, my channel one, channel two, three, and four, or signal. So this one starts from zero, all right, to 500. So each is 500 hertz. This one will start from, this one will start from 500, all right, 1000 uh, to 1000 1000 this one start from 1000 all right to 1500 and this one start from 1005 until i reach to 2000 all right so this is the entire band this is the entire band 1 2 3 4 each is 500 so the total band of all signals is cost me 2000 hertz all right, so what I need to do, I need to use multiplexer or I need to use adder. I need to add them. So I combine them all together and add. So this is my channel. So this is my signal on the channel. All right, this is my signal on the channel. So this one is 2000 and my channel bandwidth is 2700. 2700. All right. So, <coughs> so at, at the receiver, what I need to do, when this one actually is reached, 
I need to demultiplex, but also I need to use a filter, which is band pass filter. So it depend on the band. All right, it depend on depend on my band. So that's why I need a band pass filter. This one band pass filter, I can take channel one at this frequency. This band pass filter, I can take channel two, channel three and channel four. So each has its own line. All right, so after that, I can forward to the device here, device one, device two, device three, and device four. The note that I delivered last week, I said this is not the best solution. The reason why, because here actually is very close to each other, very close to each other, and very close to each other. And in communication, in telecommunication, in wireless, in any communication system, I don't want to see such uh, uh, signals, which is very close to each other. The reason why, because we will have some interference between two adjacent channel. So this one actually is neighbor of this one. This one is adjacent to this one. So we will have interference. We will have interference. We will have interference. So now we have another calculation. Now we have <clears throat> another calculation. We said that the bandwidth of the signal, uh, the channel is greater, is much greater than the bandwidth of combination of four signal, which is 2,700. So as a smart engineer, I need to think in terms of providing some space. So this one, for example, start from zero to 500. I will give 100 free. All right, I will give 100 free. And the second, I will start from 600 to 1,100. And also I give 100 free. OK, and I will start from 1,200 until I reach 1,700. I give 100 free. I will start from 1.8 until I reach to 2.3 or 2,300, which is still less than my channel. But what the main advantages of this scenario, I provide guard band. I provide a space between channel 1, channel 2, channel 2, channel 3, and signal 3 and signal 4. This one in communication, we call it guard band. All right, if you remember in analog communication, we call it guard band or sometimes safety band. The main advantages of this one, is to avoid the interference between two adjacent channel or two adjacent signal. All right. So, so this is how 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 I need to see from you guys. All right. So I didn't mention here about guard band, but if you design your questions like this, you will never get I mean a full mark. Why? Because this one actually is not an engineering design. We need to provide some in using some I mean to use some engineering concept, engineering skills. Um, to, 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 to take advantages of what we have learned previously in previous courses in order to design a more uh, reliable system, all right? A more reliable system. So this one actually is the best, all right? Here actually is, is the best. So the question that I received actually is related to this one and this one, and also it's related to this figure and, and this figure. Why we, I mean, not uh, rely on this one or why we not accept this one and we move to uh, this figure. The best solution here, we provide the guard band, safety band in order to provide, in order to avoid um, interference between uh, adjacent channel. <clears throat> so a natural question that my that my arises at this point, do we have, I mean, all the time we have guard band? The question actually is no. Similar to what I mentioned here, is not all the time, not all the time the the bandwidth of the signal is less than the bandwidth of channel. Sometimes we have bandwidth of, of signal is much greater than the bandwidth of channel. So in some scenarios, in some scenarios, we, for example, in really crowded cities, all right, really crowded uh, cities, we don't have, I mean, such, such guard band to provide. This one will be a wasted, all right, wasted band, all right. So it's, it's a trade-off. All right, it's a trade off, but generally speaking, uh, generally speaking, this is the best all right, solution. Otherwise, we need to uh, to pay uh, a price at the receiver. All right, if we have this one, OK, the price, we have high price to pay at the receiver in order to recover and in order to improve the quality of the received uh, signal. So I hope this uh, this equation is clear. And again, this equation actually we can we can just, I mean, change in this equations. Uh, we can make um, make it uh, looks different. We can include some justification. So here, actually, it's um, 
we have many, many, many things that we, we can include in, in this course. So I hope that this question is clear for you guys. And this one actually is very important, very important question to you since we can, I mean, um, memorize some some concept from previous courses and also we can include it in um, in this course. OK, guys, clear this question. <clears throat> uh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right, any concern, any? No. All right. All right, guys, then I would like just to remind you again about about this one. Um, all right, so we agree that uh, this one we're going to make it um, All right. But still, apart from, I'm, I'm sure that, I mean, not all of you, I mean, contribute and participate in, as, a, as a volunteer, but um, uh, it's a graduation ceremony and um, hmm. it was like almost 45, I guess, students who volunteered. So maybe you can ask the university. For the no, 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 no. I, I don't want. I don't want to ask guys. I'm actually. I'm trust you, but I'm. I mean, I'm generally speaking. Uh, I said that. I'm it sure not all of you participate. Yeah. So no. Yeah. The, the idea is almost every junior and senior students that are gonna graduate soon were volunteered, not yeah. new. So, yeah, exactly. Yeah, for for sure, for sure, Laban. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I'm I'm really I mean trusting you, but I'm generally speaking. <coughs> okay, guys. So I just I mean would like to to pay attention and um, I wish you all the best. So please, I mean, study hard for the coming quiz. Uh, maybe coming quiz will be uh, I'm not sure. Maybe because I mean, first quiz. Uh, some of you, I don't know. Uh, but I mean, coming quiz. I mean, try to to work hard a little bit and try to. Pay attention to some important questions in in the tutorial because it will be I, I mean a little bit similar. So okay, guys, if you don't don't have any questions, if you don't have any concern, so I wish you all the best, and we will meet each other again on coming Wednesday. And if you have any question related to uh, uh, the quiz, so feel free to text me or to I mean via Teams or via WhatsApp or so I can set I mean with you and we can discuss together. Uh, okay, that, uh, but just uh, upload the solution, please, of the first quiz. Yeah, yeah, I will. I will do that. I will do that. Uh, thank you so much. Doctor. All right, all the best. Thank you, sir. All right. Okay. Bye bye.